What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part, I want to say, 18 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Torox the Brass Bull campaign. So as we saw last time, Kazarek the One-Eye and Sidhu Bloodhorn, who is our Nurgle army, or soon to be a Nurgle army, bullied Vlad and his armies, destroying them outside of Lichburg and I guess within uh, Lichburg and badly damaging those armies uh, that remained. Uh, looks like with that one battle, Vlad's balance of power went from, I don't know, maybe 80% our, in our favor to like 99% in our favor. Soon, Castle Drakenhof will fall, and this new special herdstone will be ours. Don't really care about five melee attack when fighting undead, but the spell resistance 5% faction wide ain't too bad, so we won't say no to that. And it'll be a base to build uh, Sidhu's, uh, uh, Sidhu's new army, as in a bunch of Pestigors. Now, in terms of what we gotta do this time, first of all, Torox, you got your rampage to go, and I did start on by destroying Castle Artois between the episodes. This was one that we couldn't auto-resolve because there was, uh, well, we could have auto-resolved it, but uh, there was some units in there, and I felt like rather than allowing us to get damaged, I'd do it off-screen. It was still a very weak army, but it was a walled settlement, and thus there was no need to risk it. Uh, we can, I think so, yeah, we can still move Torox. We're gonna move him here, then we'll reset his movement points and hopefully be able to take Wesson, Oak of Prophecy, and the Sig Marsheim, all roughly at the same time. I also had another idea. We are at, uh, let's see, we are at 464 marks of ruination, so we need 36 to get to 500 and where we need to be. Now, actually, wait, do we need to be? Yeah, I... This is between 500. I assume we need 500. And thus, what we need to do... I was going to attack Elaine Darpernosix here. But if we take Havea instead, we'd be able to immediately perform this ritual and immediately max ourselves out. So I think that's what we're going to do instead. So, uh, Malagor, I guess in regular stance, you're going to hit Havea right now. Uh, what's in here, by the way? Basically nothing. Okay, so we can auto-resolve that, I hope, though Malagor's army has a bad tendency to get hurt by auto-resolves. And of course, the giant got badly hurt by it, but what can you do? And I guess we will raise in advance. Mostly to allow ourselves to heal up, because that giant's going to take a bit to heal. Raise in advance? And it's not like it's a crazy amount of money anyway. And oh, you are still in range of this, are you? Well, that's great, but for now, we'll first perform the ritual, like so, and which will get us our final level. Now assured, there is no question that your mighty war herd is feared by all the races of the world. One final. Oh, so it unlocks the final battle. Ooh, X Men. What is a sar sundering attacks? Great. A aura. Wait. Aura area buff that causes unbreakable? Well, that's just fantastic. I wish we had some of these earlier. The unbreakable is quite nice indeed. Another barbarian, and there we go. Fall of Man, the final battle for our faction. And now it's against Carl Franz. Uh, uh, that's cute. We obviously won't be doing this right now, but, uh, well, it'll certainly be something we want to do. There's two objectives to this campaign that uh, we'll be uh, looking towards for the end of it, which is A, to complete the long victory, and which is Reichland, Kurun, Aberland, and Nordland destroyed the final battle, and then to raise or conquer the Oak of Ages. And those are the main things we want. Speaking about heading towards the campaign, unfortunately engagement has uh, definitely started to drop, and we're approaching the point where we will soon probably be considering moving the chan or moving the uh, campaign to the second channel, rehoming it. It's a no-kill shelter, fortunately, so it will continue on the uh, second channel when I decide to move it, and that'll be decided by the once again as always engagement so don't forget to drop those likes and comments below to keep the campaign going here until we move it anyway uh let's see what we got to do torox we're going to reset your movement points immediately like so you have five momentum remaining let's pop you into i guess regular stance followed by ruination stance and take wesson with an auto resolve in a second, 
I just want to double check Savage Rampage. Okay, we're good. I will want to get the Horde building construction cost. And ooh, actually, I wanted to check something else. Uh, Malagor. 5.4k. I don't know if that actually reduced it or not. I'm just going to assume that it did. Uh, let's see. Not Kazrak. Actually, Kazrak. This was 8.4. Yeah, I think this was 9k before, but it's 8.4 now. So this did, in fact, reduce our horde building construction cost and buy one more, which is what we wanted. I just wanted to make sure that it actually worked. Uh, take a Wesson with an auto resolve, a little bit of damage. Hardly surprising. And I guess we'll raise an advance because this is barely any money. Raise an advance. All right, that should have hopefully unlocked the next level of the Rampage. Yes, so we will go for Stampede of Spoils in order to get that Horde Building Construction Cost Reduction. Claim. Because we'll want to get a bunch of upgrades in uh, Torox's army. We'll still want to claim the Oak of Prophecy as well, so we'll pop you into Raiding Stance, or Juggernaut Raiding. And destroy that, move around back this way. How to resolve this as well. All right, well, the Rampage is at least working for us quite nice, and this one is worth looting and raising. And, oh, this time you don't want to move, huh? Rude. I was hoping you'd move back. Uh, let's see if we can still reach Sigmarsheim. I'm not sure, but it would be nice if we could. Uh, how's our Rampaging? But oh, wow, we're near to Cataclysmic already. Nah, not going to be able to reset it much more, but oh well. Uh, go for another reset. Then, get to this. And let's see if we can auto-resolve that. And wait, will we be able to immediately pop the ritual? We would. I mean, there's no real need to pop the rituals anymore, I guess, except for the uh, uh, blood grounds, but hey, it's working. And like so, and another loot and raise. Please move, and you did move. Lovely. All right, then we'll pop you into Hidden Encampment. And was that completing the rampage? Yes, indeed it was. All right, fine. All right, with that encampment complete, you can stay right here. Now, we'll need to, this time, I guess, take the Dread Cost Reduction for Minotaurs and Minotaurs with Shields. As we'll want to start retrofitting in a little bit. And we'll have all of this for five turns. Don't really care about the extra income from raising, because most likely we won't be able to get too much mileage out of it. But we do care about the reduction in cost. So 5.4k for the Cursed Labyrinth. Very nice. And then these things will be gotten next turn. Uh, it will mean Torox will... Hmm... He'll have to move. I'm wondering right now whether... Hmm, let me just think about this for a second. We'll want to transfer some of these guys and get a few more Minotaurs. Uh, the... I guess one issue is that it takes two turns to recruit anything, but we can recruit stuff faster at uh, Herdstones. I guess what we could do is make another Herdstone nearby here somewhere, like at uh, Port Sol or Martell, probably Martell. And then we can recruit stuff there with another, uh, with another Lord. We'll get another Lord, transfer some stuff, and then get those new units on the field. We should also have capacity for Gorgons, and we should be able to build them pretty much immediately. So yeah, Torox, looking good, bud. Uh, looking good indeed. All right, let's see what else we have going for us here. All right, the rest of this is fine, and I don't believe we need to move anything other than possibly Malagor, not Morgor. I chose the wrong M there. Uh, <laughs> the freaking march dance is annoying. All right, you know what? I Once again, I know it's cheesy, but I don't care. Uh, at least in this particular situation, I don't care. Uh, we're going to attack you. We're going to ambush you. And ow, they didn't seduce us. Okay, well then, there then it isn't cheesy. Then it's perfect. It's all it's all on the up and up. We're good. Uh, we're gonna fight this because it's a Pyrrhic victory and it'll kill off poor dirty Harry because he got damaged by the uh, uh, by the auto resolve. That's just fine. Away we go once more. Ooh, is that Lash going to miss? Looks like it will just clip a few of our Ungors. Granted, we don't actually care about the Ungors in this army, and frankly, they shouldn't even really uh, be in here anymore. It's just that we need time to retrofit. But anyway, an ambush against the forces of Solanesh, but this isn't a particularly uh, difficult army to deal with, and the enemy should be pretty darn susceptible to repeated uses of our flocks of doom. Of course, this will be the first time 
him in a long, long while, where Dirty Hairy, our giant, will not be participating. But hey, we've got his buddies being built, and soon he will have three giant friends, or possibly two giant friends and an incarnate elemental friend uh, to, uh, to help him out. Anyway, once again, we're going to split the army roughly in half, Slanashi Giggle, uh, with our uh, uses of the Defiled Crows summoning, and continue our Flocks of Doom. Malgor's right in the middle of the fray as well to cause his additional damage over time effects, and since we're at the head of the column, the entire enemy army is actually moving towards us, rather than attempting to escape past us. This is going to work out quite well. And in our favor, there's the uh, various spells that we have, a little bit of everything. We've got a Bray Scream, a... Uh, uh, wait, that wasn't a Bray Scream, that was a Vile Tide, followed by a, a use of the Penumbral Pendulum. Very, very quickly, the balance of power has shifted to about 85% maybe in our favor. Most of the enemy infantry has been destroyed and Malagor has already dealt 45k damage and we haven't quite gotten to a minute. Oh, and we stopped. Our Harpies have also not joined the fray, but frankly, they're not even really needed here. And I'd rather not send the Harpies in where the Demonettes can get at them. Because the Demonettes are just like the Harpies in the sense that they are a glass cannon damage dealer. And there's no need to send the Harpies in and uh, lose half of their HP doing this when the Demonettes are all going to get obliterated by spells, plus the combination of our melee troops and our Manticores. Alright, but it looks like we'll need neither one for much longer, only the enemy chaos spawn will remain as most of the enemy marauders will just shatter. We're going to have the harpies chase the marauders down so we don't have to uh, and deal with them again. Oh wait, they're in march stance, we don't actually care. Alright. And then uh, the battle will end as soon as we get rid of these spawn of Slanash. I'm gonna have to work through them. And there's quite a few of them, and they do quite decent damage as well. I remember in the Aranessa campaign, uh, they were, well, there were a few times when they were able to reach the gun line and the well, line of infantry, and they were able to cause pretty massive amount of casualties a few times. Granted, only among zombies, but mm, in terms of fragility, harpies are probably even more fragile than the zombies are, so we do have to be careful with these guys. Anyway. They are not, however, going to be particularly threatening either to the Defiled Crows. Oh, they're so tiny and cute. Uh, the Defiled Crows uh, or the Manticores, mostly because the Defiled Crows are summoned and the Manticores don't care. They take what they want. And the Slaneshi should appreciate it. But anyway, we are done here as the enemy will drop. But the battle is not over. And, oh, I think this is me just being dumb and chasing off a couple of, uh, a couple of enemy units left. Oh, 8 HP on one unit of Forsaken of Slanish, and there we go. Close victory for us, and I do believe this army will be destroyed, unless I'm mistaken about this whole march stance thing. All right, there we go. Very quick, very nice, and the enemy was destroyed because they were in march stance, so the units that escaped did not really escape, even if they would like to think. So we're going to take the money because we're about to spend all the money anyway, and then I guess we're going to start... Another oh, Gift of Chaos, nice. And, hey, and a Forbidden Rod, very nice. I wonder if we should give that to Malagor. Hmm... The Staff of Darkoth technically works with that. I guess we could also give it to Padefu. Nothing about it. And I gotta give it to one of them. Hey, another Doe as well. And another Trickster shirt. I'll oh, be getting some good stuff today. Very nice indeed. Uh, you cannot upgrade this thing, so I guess you're gonna ignore it. You're just going to go into Raiding Stance and... Ah, we can't quite reach enemy territory. I guess it's past the river here. And is there a crossing? Oh, there is no crossing. Oh, that's a little bit of a shame. I guess we're going to just go as close as we can and destroy it next time. And I guess we'll have to go all the way down to Almagora as well to completely destroy these guys. They do want peace, but I don't think we want peace. We want to destroy them so they don't come back. And I guess we'll have to uh, meet up with Aberku anyway. And what we can also do is set up another herdstone here. And there's also that. 
to consider. Anyway, let's see what else we have to do this time around. Uh, oh, I was going to give that dough to somebody. You have one. And what about the other guy? Do you have a dough? Yes, you do. Oh, well, then we just need a new... Uh, uh, we need a new army, which we will get on the field shortly as well. Hmm. Let me think about this. What's the best way to do this? Now, we could start Torox on recruitment right now. It will mean he'll have to sit here for two turns, but he's already sitting here, so it'll effectively only mean one turn wasted, which ain't that bad. And he's already in Laret, which is fine. I just need to make sure that he immediately is able to transfer stuff over, which we need to immediately raise a new lord, which would mean we need to immediately spend some dread to unlock another army. So I guess we'll increase army capacity by one, like so. All right, then... We have 974, which ain't anything crazy. Uh, then what we'll want to do... Boost Cravings would be good for a Slaneshi Lord to determine... Kind of sounds cornate to me, but the thing is, the corn army doesn't necessarily want these units, does it? You know, let's get a temporary army up and running. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but for now I just want somebody to transfer stuff to. Uh, we don't have a shadow army yet. Let's do this. Tormented Utterances, Great Bray Shaman of Shadows. In fact, we don't have any Bray Shaman of Shadows. Which is a bit of a shame, because Pit of Shades is frankly incredible, and, well, we have been using Penumbral Pendulum, but uh, you gotta love Pit of Shades. And Occam's Mind Razor is quite nice as well. Hmm. And the reason I want one of these guys, the Shaman, or rather... Okay, not a Tusk or Chariot, a Razor or Chariot. A uh, Shaman, or rather than another one, is because of this. They have this. A uh, Hardened Pelt, which gives 15 armor for Chaos uh, Warhounds and Razor Gores. It's not anything crazy, but it's probably more than we'd get from the... Uh, mm, from most of the other Lords. And besides, some something of a temporary measure. Uh, then what we'll want to do is go to our Rewards of Dreadwall. We also need to figure out what we're going to build, or start building at the very least. Uh, we could build at least two more Minotaurs with shields right now. We can certainly afford it. Yeah, Minotaurs with shields. One, two, and a oh, damn, they're expensive. <laughs> all right, well, I guess two is all we can build right now. Uh... Well, I guess we could start building a few more of the other Minotaurs as well. Oh, no, we can't. We're at three out of one. We wouldn't have the capacity. Huh. Maybe we just go for another Minotaur with shields? Hmm. Except we can't afford another one, can we? At least not at the current time. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll start on this and then we'll... I'll think about it. I want Torox to sit here for too long, but, uh, well, if he has to sit here for a few turns, then I guess he has to. Uh, you, Ungrol, oh, okay, fine, Torox, I'd like you to transfer two of the Razor Gores, and just the two, and only the two because we don't know whether we're going to fight shortly. Which is very possible. And then start building these Minotaurs. I wish there was a reduction in the uh, speed of which they will be built, but, oh, well. We had to retrofit sometime. It was going to happen eventually, right? So, may as well. And I believe that's all. Kazarek wanted to build some stuff, and I do believe I set him up to build... Oh, no, I didn't. I cancelled it because this was going to happen, the ritual. So, yes. We'll build the Cursed Labyrinth. Uh... We could build the Pits of Quark to get Jabber Slaves, because I figured we probably want to put a couple Jabber Slaves in the Nurgle army, because it kind of makes sense there. And because of the Bile Blood thing that they do. Seems kind of Nurgleish to me. Uh, somewhere between Nurgleish and Zinchin, which, sure. Uh, yeah, fine, build the Pits of Horror. Because where else would we get the recruitment for the Jabber Slaves? I wish it wasn't so expensive, but there isn't much we can do about it. Uh, let's get the Shaman's Pyre as well to get Shatterstone. And let's get the Totem of Bones as well for the reduction in costs. And we'll get the Mound of Blades for the Magic Item drop chance. And damn, that was a lot of money. But we were expecting it to be a lot of money. 
And we need to save the rest because we need to spend pretty much all of the rest on uh, on Torox's army now. So with that, we can skip skip outpost available. Nope, still no. At least not with anybody that we are currently uh, having dealing with dealings with. Rather, nay, we're host of the apocalypse. You're out there. How do you feel about Scarby? I guess feel okay about each other, eh? But they don't want peace. Hmm. How much money do we need to start trading with you, RK? On a thousand gold? A little bit more expensive than I'd like. We could declare war on the Brotherhood of the Bear. There you go. And not sign the non-aggression pact just because it will prevent us from... Hmm... Well, it'll reduce our bestial rage. I take it trade agreements don't do that, though. At least I don't think they do. Yeah, it seems like for whatever reason we're allowed we're allowed to trade. We're not allowed to do anything else. Sure, game, sure. That doesn't seem too beastmanly, but I'll take it. Anyway, end turn now and let's proceed. Oh, we'll still need to also unlock Ah, oh, it'll cost another ten thousand gold to unlock the ability to build the uh what is this? Oh, Deathmaster Snitch. He's come a Colin. I was about to... I should have sallied out and done this, but I guess we're going to have to fight this man. The auto-resolve might be lying, and this uh, herdstone might be destroyed, so... I'd rather fight this and find out. I forgot what I was saying, though. Hmm... Something about beastmen not trading, or did I... That eh, doesn't matter, go. And the lighting in this, on these uh, Beast Paths maps always look very, very strange. And oh my lord, that's a big ol'... Uh, well, that's where the light is coming from. Are you telling me the Beastmen built this? The Beastmen built a giant fire thing so they could see? The Beastmen lit all of these. That's what you're, that's what you're telling me right now, Gam. Hmm... Maybe they relate to those specifically around herd stones, because I just don't see the beastmen lighting a bunch of, uh, of uh, braziers. Also, this is just a pile of wood and sticks, so I feel like this is a good way to set a forest fire. But anyway, and Deathmaster snitches come a Colin, which I was saying and before I got distracted. And uh, he has a reinforcing army on the field, or about to arrive on the field. We're going to try to charge Deathmaster Snitch's main army because we want to try to get them engaged before the reinforcements arrive. It may be problematic and I'm not 100% sure uh, how well we're going to do here. Fortunately, the Deathmaster is relatively low in terms of his levels, so he's not going to be a crazy threat right now. And our two units of Razor Gores should be extremely effective against all those clan rats and night runners and whatnot. Anyway, charging on in the night, night runners, uh, night runners and gutter runners, whatever, get hit by our gores and our ungores. And our best gores will bring up the rear to try to target the enemy elites as best they can. Over on this side, we've dropped our harpies down on the uh, enemy threats, i.e. the unit of uh, plague mortars. Can't have, or poison wind mortars, mortars, whatever. Can't be having those fired down into our units as they'll probably rip apart our entire battle line within a few volleys. And not care about all of those skaven uh, that they're killing as well. Alrighty, and the enemy reinforcements are arriving on the field now. That is a lot of rats to contend with, by the looks of it. And there's a chieftain leading them as well, as well as a pack master and an enemy warlord, so certainly a few threatening units there. Our best gores should be able to hold for quite a while, although, ooh, their leadership was just down at three. Damn, that was, uh... That was frightening. Would have been bad if the best of had routed. We really need them to hold the line. Over on this side, however, it looks like we're doing pretty good. The enemy didn't have nearly as many troops uh, here, and they will get surrounded and destroyed while the harpies chase them down. And Deathmaster Snitch, of course, is not somebody that we can kill easily, so we're going to, by and large, ignore him. We're going to leave either an Ungor or a Gor herd near Deathmaster Snitch and have him just distracted by them, slash surrounded by them for as long as we can while we commit the rest of our entire melee blob to trying to deal with this. 
certainly going to need to. A uh, decent amount of the enemies on the leftmost flank are running. They have by and large collapsed here and in the background we have our uh, our centigors adding their axes to the fray trying to knock out those session triads while our harpies and our other centigors move around move around and try to target uh, the enemy important targets. Biggest blob of enemies here about to get hit with a vile tide. Now been waiting for all those clan rats and scaven slaves and whatnot to blob up and they did blob up nicely see a few one gores and gores go flying as well but well worth it i think as that looked like it opened a pretty darn big hole in the enemy's battle line actually just out of curiosity how did our little caster do yeah 38k damage it's not on malagor's level perhaps but uh, for a single spell that's damn nice So far, Slaw has gotten the biggest damage out of all of our casters, and I don't think he'll be beaten in this campaign, at least I doubt it. He he got over 200k in one in one go, so now that's really hard to match because you need a lot of units blobbed up in order to do it. I guess uh, somebody else could have done it here, but this is a caster that we got out of the uh, herdstone and doesn't have a lot of access to a lot of fancy spells, nor a lot of mana either. Anyway, the best of boys continue to hold their ground against all of those Skaven who are just unable to capitalize on their vastly superior numbers. And we feel right at home fighting in these woods probably a lot more than the Skaven do. They prefer their underground tunnel fighting to all of this. This isn't quite the open sky, but it's probably too open sky for their uh, uh, for them to feel too comfortable. All right, not much to say other than that. In fact, it looks like Deathmaster Snitch's army will wrap. We were able to distract Deathmaster Snitch with this unit of gores for pretty much the entire battle. I really wasn't expecting to kill him. His stats are too kind. He's got dodge and is, uh, is surprisingly difficult to bring down on occasion. Plus, he's got that world of weeping blades, so I didn't want to commit a unit of bestigors on him as he would have done too much damage to them. They were much better off holding the massive pile of enemy rats here, allowing them to get blobbed up and for that big hit with that uh, with that vile tide to take them off the field. Uh, MVPs are probably going to go to other than our shaman, the best of wars for holding definitely the piggies for dishing out massive amounts of damage through the enemy lines for the entire battle and not really taking too much damage in terms of their entity loss or HP loss and the harpies flying around in the background for the entire battle. One of the annoying aspects of dealing with enemy skaven is the fact that they constantly route and rally, route and rally, but the uh, the harpies do so much damage, and especially against lightly armored targets like those Skaven, uh, that they were able to prevent so many of them from coming back and ripping apart a few of them as well, the enemy range line. Anyway, we're going to chase down the enemy warlord by the looks of it successfully, and the battle is ours. A heroic victory, in fact, so uh, the Death Master bet wrong uh, this time around. Though I do love his voice, so... Alright, well, we still managed to pull it off, unfortunately, because of the nature of the battle, a lot of the Skaven were able to escape and probably come back and fight another day, but what can you do? Now, I'd love to take the money, but not only is Snitch still nearby with his forces, but also there are forces belonging to various other factions nearby, and I think I'd rather not lose the Herdstone, if possible. It's not a big deal, and it doesn't really have much use, but nonetheless, it is giving us good fights, and if nothing else, that is worthwhile. Alright, let's see if anybody else uh, deigns to attack us this time around. Vladdy wants peace now that he's lost all of his armies, but that ain't gonna happen, and he comes back instantly, uh, but not for long. We'll ambush him again and destroy him again. Too bad that uh, Sidhu won't get the kill, but oh well. Uh, this better not damage us too heavily. Alright, killed one chariot, damaged a couple of the single entities, but oh well. Uh... 
You know what, I think we'll heal up for this as well, rather than losing the Bestial Rage, because we'll want to continue attacking, and Castle Drakenhof should be a reasonably hard target, so we'll want to be able to actually attack it. Wolfric wants peace, that's cute, that's tremendously cute. Now, I mean, I guess we did declare war on him, but, uh, well, we declare war on pretty much everybody. Uh, Defensive Alliance with the U-Clan Septic, are you still alive? Hmm... That, uh, that's the pile of rats here, eh? I mean, they are giving us 50 gold per turn, but no, 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 we're not gonna do this. We are not gonna do this, and most likely we're going to betray Clan Skull shortly. Uh, the pirates want peace as well. Wow, everybody's asking for peace now that, uh, Torhox is building minotaurs. No, no peace. Only war. And, okay, we don't need to fight this again. Ow! Oh, it'll kill off one of our best agors. Well, hopefully it'll come back without too long of a delay. And hopefully the Skaven won't be able to take advantage of this. Devour captives replenish. We'll see. And yeah, we could have fought that again, but meh. Not twice, effectively, the same battle, except when... Except whereas the enemy is even weaker than before. Uh, confederation between Reichland and Nordland, oh my. I guess that is somewhat good, in the sense that we have to destroy them all, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll work on it. And confederation between the Golden Order and Everland, I believe. Hey, another Axe of Men. Unless I'm mistaken. Hey, it... Ooh. The other Trickster's Shard. Now that... That is a worthwhile pickup. And... Wait, someone receives Plague... I can't, no, no, I'm excited about the other trickster shirt. Upgrade any settlement building to level 5. Mission successful. What? I don't think we upgraded any settlement building to level 5. At least, that I'm aware of. Because we don't have it unlocked. Odd. Oh, no, it's a horde building that got upgraded to tier 5. Ha, huh. I guess it doesn't have to be a settlement building, per se. Anyway, what I was excited about is the other's trickster shard, because we can put it on, let's say... Mm, I don't know. Doesn't really matter. The Bulgore or the Wargore or the Bray Shaman? Although we may want to keep him more out of the fight than the other two. Say, so, yeah, let's put it on you. And we gotta figure out who to put those axes of men on the other trickster shirt on you, good sir. And that's a 25% spell resistance on everybody near ya. On top of the 20% spell resistance reduction from the staff of Darkoth. So Malagor, you are going to get even nastier. Lovely. Alright, now Torox. You're stuck staying where you are, but that's okay, because we'll have Gorgons on the field shortly, we'll have Bulgors available shortly, may as well upgrade the whole of Beast Filth, and... I guess we'll just upgrade everything here. I'm not sure that the Immolation Grants are all that worth it, because it's not a significant upgrade over the previous version. We still get Shatterstone, just a little bit more mana, and our mana's maxed out anyway. And Desecrated Altar, sure. Why not? All right. All right. Now, I guess we need to move everybody else so that... Huh. Oh, it's doing that thing. It's doing... Oh, because it's... These guys aren't built. It's counting them as if they still can be built. Okay. Well, I'm going to take advantage of this. And... Transfer you, 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 you. Just, just, just do it. Just do it. All right. We've got the basis of an army there. And build another, at least one more Minotaur with shields. I was going to go two Minotaurs with shields and then the rest of the Minotaurs, the dual axe Minotaurs, rather than the shielded ones. But now I'm thinking it would actually be cheaper to just build shielded ones. Uh, they won't attack as fast, mind you. But they will be a little bit less vulnerable, and we'll have Gorgons and Gorbals and Minotaurs with great weapons to dish out the damage that's needed. Oh, also, this unit of Ungors. Uh, you can have that as well. There you go. And you can go into Raiding Stance, and Torox, yeah, you're going to start losing your bestial rage, but, uh, well, that was always bound to happen. Anyway, keep building these guys, and... Yeah, just build one more. Alright, so now we have one, two, three, four, five... I guess we could do another one and then start building a couple Bulgors next turn. Doesn't need to be this turn, but, uh, yeah, why not? I wish it wasn't so horrifically expensive. Yeah, maybe we'll be fine the current levels. I'd rather get a couple Bulgors and those Gorgons in there as well. Though we do have capacity for three. 
Wait, does that mean... I think the Bloodbrood Behemoth doesn't count as one, so we should be able to build three. We'll only need two. I mean, we don't have to... We have to save some for the uh, Coronate army as well. Though this army is kind of coordinated anyway, but anyway. Uh, Morgur, your turn, my friend. Move around Schlag and Schlaghugel, rather. Uh, like here-ish. And then you're going to go for Dietershofen after that, like so. Did I screw that up? I did not screw that up. And, ooh. I got some decent defenders here. Wait, might fight this. And, ooh, I think we actually have to fight this, because if these guys suddenly declare war on us, that's two full stacks. And if we're too badly hurt, we won't be able to deal with them. Frankly, it'll be pretty difficult to deal with them in the first place, which would make it interesting, and we may have to uh, do a little bit of a retrofit for the army first. And, ow, oh, you're moving in to take Oldenlitz. Uh, do we want you to take Olden? Why don't you go take Rosefells? And Norden, what are you doing? No, you know what? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to perform this ritual right now, just so this guy doesn't, uh, isn't able to get it. There you go. Alright, now this will be a blood ground, yes? Oh, it doesn't have the, uh, doesn't have a symbol. I'm pretty sure it will, it is, slash will be, alright? The ritual is completed. Hmm. I did that thing last time where we couldn't see it, but then it appeared... Ah, there it is, it appeared afterwards. Alright, so we're fine, we're fine. And yes, I know that these guys are our allies, but I don't care. Uh, it doesn't mean we uh, have to make them too powerful. Also, the challenges of the Dark Gods, the next one is available. I don't particularly care about Unnatural Order here. Because the Hero Self-Defense Chance and Leadership Aura during Ambush is meh. Definitely meh. Primal Fury upgraded ain't bad. Miscast base chance reduction. I think we'll go for that because we do constantly miscast with our uh, with our heroes. Frankly, Horns of War and Primal Fury are both quite fine. Guardian on heroes is pretty swell. It's 15% physical resistance. Always nice. And Primal Fury upgrades literally every unit that we have. So yeah. Kazrak. Because you ambushed, it cancelled your... Aha! I knew that it did that. Well, that's a sham. That's a crying sham. I guess we'll have to wait until next turn to build those. Uh, what we won't have to wait until next turn, however, for is to get Castle Drakenhof. And now oh, these guys are being opportunistic and have taken that as well. Kazrak. To Drakenhof we shall go. Valiant defeat, eh? We'll see about that. And... Huh. Oh, that's annoying. I think we didn't heal as much because it cancelled our stance, didn't it? Well, 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 what can you do? What can you do? You guys both go here, please. And I guess we'll level up before hitting Drakenhof, which will definitely be an important place. And hey, we got plenty of Herdstone Shards right now as well. I mean, not plenty, but a uh, much more decent amount. Uh, let us get an upgrade. Uncanny senses. We've been dealing with a lot of vampires. And you know what? I've been wanting to try Kazrak on foot rather than on his chariot. And I know his... Chariot is kind of iconic, but he's going to be individually quite a bit stronger on foot, so I'm going to try that out. Uh, Bray Shaman of Death. You're still not being transferred to that other army, but we can have magical reserves for you for now. We'll transfer you as soon as we have the... Uh, mm, we have the ability to build more Bestigors. You should go into scouting. Oh, I shouldn't even level you, should I? Yeah, I shouldn't even level you, because we're currently getting maxed scouting from the Bray Shaman of Death instead. Warg Wars. You have Blood on the Wind, let's move you into Eerie Insight, and... Oh, you don't have Will of the Gods or Bloodlust? Oh. Totems or Will of the Gods and Bloodlust? Well, I just answered that question by applying the points. And next up, we're trying to get to Retinue Physician here, so I guess we'll go for Inspirational. We're immune to attrition anyway, and we rarely, if ever, defend. All right, you already have Retinue Physician and the Totems. You missing Shadow Hide, but I think you're good enough to now start moving into this stuff. We really need Call to More Sleep and Primal Instincts so that the Chariot isn't so incredibly vulnerable. Although it'll still be pretty vulnerable, I'm sure. Uh, you're level 11 now, meaning... Yeah, I forgot what the other one got. You got Forerunner, which means you can have Alpha Beast. To buff up those doggos, like so. Then we'll go for Corroded Will, and then we'll go for Blood on the Wind, and try to get to those totems ASAP. Nice. And then you... Huh. 
Did I not get the other one with the gods and bloodless? I think I did. Uh, corroded will and blood on the wind. There was one point by the looks of it that I did differently on you two. Does it really matter? Probably not. Well, either way. Uh, you, sir. You have apocalyptic vision and creatures of the herd out. You have pretty much everything other than possibly the jabber slights. And that we'll want for the Nurgle army. Let's move through Rune of the True Beast into Slugskin. Because that also sounds quite Nurgly to me. And frankly, we've been doing Slugskin over a Crown of Horns on pretty much every army. Generally, I think since the Beastmen are a very offense-oriented army, you want to put at least a few points into defense wherever it's possible. Simply to counteract that. Anyway, looks like we're gonna have a fight for us. We're on our hands. The Karen Wraiths are gonna be a problem because we have very little uh, in the way of magical damaging units, but we have our Bray Shaman to hopefully counteract them. Go. All right, moment of truth again. Okay, it is at 14k, so in theory it... Oh, no, it won't work because uh, <laughs> somebody pointed out that it might work if we don't attack the gate, but in this situation we have to. Simply because we uh, uh, we don't have Shatterstone available in this army, which is a bit of a shame, but what can you do? Uh, you guys stay back here. You can go near there. Let's set up and let's strike. All right, like so... Like so, we're probably going to send a few of the doggos around to go through the other gate, but it doesn't have to be right now. Uh, chariots, you'll actually move on in to get the piggies. And we'll wait for the reinforcements to arrive behind us. Good, good. Start, wait. You and you should be a part of a separate group. Alright, Kazrak, you be group one. Start deployment, start battle, go. Uh, head for that gate immediately. We'll send in both of the Wargors on their chariots to help you out. Let's send in the piggies and the doggies into the gate. And we'll send Korok's man rippers, followed by the other Bestigors. And then followed immediately by the Blackhorn's Ravagers. Chariots, you can enter the fray as well shortly. Just have to be careful. You too. Stick around. Actually, you know what? Stay away from that Vampire of Death. It's somewhat likely to hurt and or kill you with piles of spirit leeches. I would like you, however, to move around and go for the other gate. Although it may or may not be necessary. And then you for the gate as well. Just blob up around the gate. I don't believe the enemy has a caster that actually threatens us, so we don't care about something uh, hurting us in that manner. All right, and ooh, 14k will go down very, very quickly. Kazrak, you were first in, and you get to be first into combat if your units allow you. There we go. Start taking some skeleton warriors. All right, Kazrak on foot. And ah, there's that, uh, there's that spirit leech. Who are you hidden with that with? Uh, looks like it used it one one on the Kazrak's good boys. Cause that's just rude. It's just plain rude. Now, Kazrak, I need you to start losing melee combat so that you can summon your free doggos. I guess we could watch them whack away at a few skelly boys for a bit. All right, come on, lose melee combat. Where are the skelly boys? All right, here comes some hex right, Karen wraiths or other. Maybe they'll do it. Attacked in rear, fresh in melee combat even. Come on, come on, summon doggos. He can still use Handmaster on foot, right? I'm just gonna assume that he can. Yes, in melee, losing melee combat. I mean, I've, I've been doing a reasonably decent job of sending him in first, but okay, right now he is not losing melee combat. Go deal with those Graveguard. They can, they can threaten you, right? They're Graveguard with great weapons. Maybe you can start losing melee combat like this. And as soon as you do, we get everybody else. There you go. All right, everybody else. In you go. Everybody. Shut up and dance. All right, Kazrak, you can activate Scourge. You can activate your healing potion. And we can buff everybody up. And with that Bloodlust, Wargors. I would like you to drop a totem or two. One. And oh. the other Wargors back here. This will sit back here. You guys move on in. 
Duh goes around to the other gate, around to the other gate, and you two go around and then attack that gate. We can actually send in the second lord to go around as well. Ooh, we can activate- Ah, oh, we can't activate Spirit of Korok. Damn. I was hoping. Alright, and we can activate another Bloodlust. I do believe we should have another one of these totems available as well. Let's send more Bestigors in to the fray. Kazra, continue to fight. And if you drop below the HP, you'll be fine. Uh, then we'll buff everybody up, up with the Vissen's Wild Form. I also want a Trickster Shard on them to reduce their spell resistance. And then pop Flock of Doom on them as well. Also overcast. Gotta be careful about miscasting, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, do we want a Soul Blade or anything of that nature? I mean, maybe not right now. I would like you, however, to pop Fate of Biyuna on... Uh, is there a non-hurt unit of Cairn Wraiths? Oh, there's one back here. Man, what is this? Oh, that's a summoned unit of Warhounds. Alright, fine. You go here and you need to be closer. Alright, and I believe there isn't really much to say or control. And damn, Kasrak's healing. <laughs> I only say damn because I wanted him slight uh, reduction. Oh, we got two more wargors that I forgot. My bad, my bad. All right, where are the other the two new wargors? You and you. Go around the gate. Everybody in. Everybody in. Join the fray as soon as you can, and you can now pop. I think a soul blight on the blob. And ah, a unit of Karen rates with full HP. Well, isn't that lovely? Fate to be unit on you. Oh, as soon as you can recast it. Kazrak still at reasonably decent HP. Ooh, one of the war wars is starting to get hurt. Let's be careful with them. Can't really do too much about any of this, but yeah, I think we'll be fine. All right, now cast that Fate of Biuna, please. And we gotta wait until... Actually, we don't gotta wait at all. Flock of Doom. There we go. Flock of Doom and Fate of Biuna. Kazrak, you are gonna pop the Mighty Roar, and now we can continue watching. I'm sure some of our units in there are getting hurt, but it's kind of hard to tell what the heck is happening. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody's getting so badly hurt that it's concerning. The chariots are fine. The war wars are frankly the ones uh, getting the most damage. You know what? You guys could just back off and then charge back in. And you can pop a few of your totems. All right, Kazrak, go after the Vargulf if you can, and you can repop your... Bloodlust. Is that gate down? Oh, okay. The gate is down. Everybody on, get on in. There's plenty of doggos to go around. And let's send in some more infantry as well. Mm, we have another Vissens Wild form available. Why not? Why not? Get everybody doing a little bit more damage with it. And we don't need the helmet with many eyes. Looks like the Fate of Biuna has nearly destroyed that unit of Cairn Rays. Just gonna wait for another Flock of Doom. In fact, we need to wait no longer. Uh, can wait for the Trickster Shirt, actually. We've got 10 seconds on it. Alright, and here come the pups. And the new War Gores and stuff. Alright, Kazrak. Ooh, Spirit of Korok on ya. Nope, still slightly too much HP. Come on, get hit again. <laughs> uh... I wonder how much or less effective this would have been if uh, he had been on his chariot. He's still greater than 50%? Okay, fine. Alright. And do so. A little bit more damage. How's the HP on everybody looking? It's fine. Where to Korok now? Ah, there we go. I'm gonna see what the effect looks like. Oh, it looks like a, a vile tide, sort of. And this will give you a massive amount of physical resistance and help our magics. There we go. The spirit is in. The spirit of the bully. The OG bully himself. I guess I could have activated on one of the uh, dam all the heroes that were already damaged earlier, but meh. How much damage do you do out of curiosity? And let's see. Spirit of Korok. 103 melee attack, 5 melee defense. I assume you have a, an aura of some kind, if I can actually select your unit card before the battle ends. I, please. Spirit. Okay, you know what? Just, just pause. Just pause. I just want to... just want to see. No. Oh, for the love of why is this so difficult? Wait, how do you pin... You pin this. Ah, ah, there we go. Alrighty, so what do you have? Spirit of the Wild and area damage. Large explosion with knockback effect causes damage to self. Interesting. 50% ward save. Oh, well, who needs melee defense when you have 50% ward save and 100 armor? And he was on the field for like 10 seconks and got 20k damage. Not bad, not bad. 
All right, excited to uh, get a little bit more value out of him, but alas, we won't be doing so this particular battle because this particular battle is over. And Castle Drake and half is ours. All right, easy enough. And living losses, we got plenty of damage on the Bray Shaman of Beasts because of all those piles and flock of doom around the gate. The AI does have a bad tendency to uh, just sort of blob up around the gate like that. At least with certain factions. It would have been better off probably holding the walls, even if we weren't going up the walls. All right, well, either way, we are going to not loot and raise, but raise the herdstone here. And, hey, another Staff of Darkoth. Very nice. We've been getting some good items lately. Good. Shardui has a Razor Gore Chariot. And this is a tier five, four, rather, so we have Spell Resistance at four. Nice. And, ooh. You can immediately recruit Centigors and regular Minotaurs. Mm, I was thinking about getting Kazrak a couple of Minotaurs, or we could just swap them out and give them to the uh, give them to the Nurgle army. Hmm, certainly a thought. I'm just taking a look at what we can build here. There's a bunch of stuff. Wait, just out of curiosity, what can you build? You can build some gores. We need a little bit of dread, you know, and we'll figure that out next time around, because we are basically out of time. Anyway, now... You two need to meet up. One, to transfer the giants, although I guess you need to wait for a couple more giants. Although not too many more. Transfer these two for the Razor Gore herds. And... You will need to go back here anyway to continue building more... Chosen Sandgores. We'll need to build two more. As soon as Kazrak is built up. Oh, so I don't forget Kazrak. This is quite important, good sir. And, okay, now you're building this stuff. So next turn we'll have another capacity. Anyway, I think that's where we'll call it here. Castle Drakenhof is a pretty important pickup. We'll once again go Shamanic Challenges and we'll do the uh, Winds of Malady. But this one will actually upgrade to full so that we can unlock Chosen Sangors. And we'll be able to immediately build six in this army. And that'll be a pretty big portion of what will make this army. So I think either next episode or the episode after that, both Nurgle and Zinch will be online. And we'll be looking to get corn and slime slanish up and running soon as we can anyway uh more beastmen to come as including the retrofits and the new army so stay tuned for that don't forget to leave those likes and comments below all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching